there's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then many people heard the gospel in their own language. But here we are already many people who have many different languages, who can share and talk in many different tongues. I unfortunately am limited to English. But nevertheless, I know there are many here who can share in many languages. So welcome, welcome. Let us pray as we begin. And then Anthony will have a team who will share in our worship moments this morning. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, thank you so much that we have the amazing privilege to have a small taste of heaven already. Lord God, we are brothers and sisters. We humbly ask that your presence would touch our hearts guide our thoughts toward heaven. May the word shared in worship and the word brought to us by Pastor Don just find fertile ground and encourage us in our walk. And may we then in turn be able to encourage others, pointing them to Jesus. Thank you for this moment and for your presence. We pray in thy name, Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'd like to welcome Tony, Anthony, and his team. For worship. Thank you, Pastor Ted. And I just want to welcome everybody wherever you are, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening. We are so glad you're here. And I want to thank um, some friends, Tom and family in upstate New York, that will be joining and helping out with one of our sections. So, so to kick things off, I want to just ask a question or two um, on this on for Thanksgiving. You know, what are you thankful for today? Has the Lord done anything? And if you want to put it in the chat box, that'd be great if you just want to think about that. But as we start a new day, at least I'm starting a new day here. I'm um, in Crossville, Tennessee. Um, you know, what are you thankful for today? And I want to share something I'm thankful for. Um, if you think about our the Bible, there are, well, actually, let me just ask a question. Does anybody know, without Googling it or looking it up, how many chapters are in the Bible? Do you know how many chapters are in the Bible? If you do, or I guess you want to guess how many chapters there are. Um, I didn't know that how many there were exactly until looking it up recently, but there are over 1,100 chapters in the Bible, 1,189 to be exact. And another way to think about the chapters in the Bible that Jesus has given us are it is, you know, over a thousand love letters from Jesus that he's written for us. And I'm very, very thankful for the Bible. And specifically, there are a number of promises that are really meaningful to me. And I just want to share something with you. There's this, uh, I'll just put that up so you can see it. Maybe you can see it. There we go. It's a little four by six notepad, a uh, notebook. And about five years ago, the Lord put a burden on my heart a conviction to spend more time with him. And as I thought about spending more time with Jesus, one of the things that I did was starting to look at promises in the Bible that I was very appreciative of and start to memorize them. So I just want to share a couple Bible promises from the Lord that are very meaningful to me. I'm very thankful for. Uh, in Proverbs 18 verses 10, it says the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And then another beautiful promise that I would like to share is from Isaiah 46, 3 and 4. Jesus is saying, I have created and cared for you since you were born. I will be your God through all your lifetime. Yes, even when your hair is white with age, I have made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and be your savior. So I am so thankful for Jesus for dying for my sins and that he's my savior and that he will carry me no matter where I am in my life and my journey with him. So with that, I would like to hand it over to my friends in um, upstate New York, Tom and Phoebe, and they're going to take us to the next part of our worship together today about praising God. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, I have a, a scripture to share with you, and it kind of goes right along with what Tony has said. It's found in Psalms 103, Psalms 103, and uh, a, just a few short verses here. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, yeah. and forget not all his benefits, uh -huh. who forgiveth all thy iniquities, uh -huh. who healeth uh -huh. all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee. Oh, sorry, we just lost your microphone there for a minute. Could you please, Tom, unmute? Okay, sure. Would you like me to repeat? The last couple sentences, please. Sorry okay. about that. Sure, no problem. It says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, And now uh, we're going to we're going to sing a song. Praise to the Lord. Uh, it's called <laughs> Praise to the Lord. And uh, this is I'm sorry I forgot to introduce. Uh, my name is Tom Nagy, and this is my wife Phoebe and our daughter Angelica.
Well, thank you so much. Anthony, you just got muted, unfortunately. Could you unmute, please? Thank you. <laughs> sure thing. Thank you, Pastor Ted. I just want to think, again, thank you, Tom and Phoebe and Angelica. That was beautiful. Praise the Lord for music. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that we can sing and give him glory for what he's done in our lives. And I, I don't know about all of you, but I, when I hear singing or when I sing, I feel closer to Jesus. And I can't wait for heaven. And we can do this together instead of on Zoom, we can be side by side with Jesus and with all of heaven, the heavenly host. Now, our, our last section here before we close our worship part is around confession. And uh, confession is an important part. And I, I don't know where each one of you are in your journey with Jesus, but I am so glad you're here. And I just want to ask a question or two. Is there anyone or anything that you may need to make right uh, with the Lord? or with another, another person, a friend, a family member, a neighbor. Um, maybe you know, maybe you don't. Uh, one of my favorite promises is in Psalms 139 that says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Lead me to Jesus. Draw me close to Jesus that he may help me reflect his character. That's my prayer and wish today, and, and I hope it's your prayer as well. Um, I want to share one more promise. You know, sometimes I don't, I've had this question before in my past, like maybe there's a sin and I'm just not sure that, you know, does Jesus, does, what does he do? How, my sins, I know he, he forgives me, but this is a beautiful promise that is found in Isaiah 43, 4. And it says, I have made you and I will not forget to help you. I have blotted out your sins. They are gone like the morning mist at noon. Let me just repeat that last part. It is so assuring from a visual perspective. You think about the mist, it, it doesn't exist at noon. It's gone. Jesus is saying, I have blotted out your sins. They are gone like morning mist at noon. And right now, we're going to take a minute to have a personal, this between you and the Lord. So I'd invite you to kneel uh, or wherever you're at and and take a minute to have personal time prayer uh, between you and Jesus. And then in about one minute, I will close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be here to worship you. I want to ask that the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon Pastor Don McLafferty as he brings us a message this morning or this afternoon or wherever we are, and that the Holy Spirit would tug on our hearts to draw us to Jesus, to, to prepare us, Lord, to to be disciple makers in our homes, with our friends, and with our communities around the world. Please empty us of self and fill us with Jesus and help the world to see Jesus in each one of us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
with that, I want to hand that back to Pastor Ted. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Anthony and team, for your worship time this. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Anthony and team, for this worship experience. And we have been led to the throne of God. My friends, as we continue and Pastor Don is about to share, you're going to want to have a piece of paper of some size beside you. You're going to want something to draw with. Pastor Don loves to have us all involved as we journey back to the book of Acts. And so please have those beside you, your Bible. And I just wish to thank the 24-7 prayer team. They have been faithful for many weeks now with prayer around the 24-hour clock, hour in and hour out, and sponsoring the special time as Pastor Don leads two times a day. So Pastor Don, we look forward to the teaching that God has prepared you to share at this time. Thank you, Pastor Ted. Good morning to all of you from the fields and the forest of Tennessee in the southern part of the United States of America. And my friends, I have to tell you that it's a joy to have you be a part of returning to the book of Acts, living by the Holy Spirit. That's this series. It's a 14-part series. It's done in a simple intergenerational way so that you and I can take the word of God and pass it on, the good news of the gift of the Holy Spirit. We can pass this on to children and teenagers and adults of all ages. So be ready. So the first activity before we go to the word of God, Remember, the activity is for the purpose of of getting the mind and the heart ready, prepared for the Word of God. The biggest way to prepare is to ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts. We've already had some time to, to confess and seek God. That's beautiful and right on target. But then it's good to have an activity that gets us thinking. And so this morning, please draw a picture of a gift, a gift. I'll show you the funny little package I drew. But I want you to think of how are you going to draw a picture of a gift, okay? And as soon as you draw it, I'll give you just one moment. Then please put it up to the screen. Let's see what a gift might look like from your part of the world. Maybe it's a, maybe it looks more like a sack rather than a box. I don't know. What does a gift look like in your part of the world? Just put your picture up to the screen. And let's see what it looks like. Maybe it has a bow on it. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Okay, here's somebody. Roni. Oh, put it up closer, please. Let's see. Let's see what you have. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Roni. And Deborah. Yes. Has a picture of a gift there. And Luis from Brazil. Keep on coming. Let's see if anybody else has a picture. Okay. Oh, now now many. Lynn is showing us what a, a beautiful mm-hmm. gift looks like in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I can't even name everybody. Okay. Good. Now, now the follow-up question is, go to chat, and what is a gift that you knew your family or friends wanted to give you? They even promised that they would give you, and you had a hard time waiting for it. Okay, so go to chat. What's a gift that family or friends? So these are these are from earthly, earthly family friends. Not talking about God right now. What is something that you really, really longed to have that was promised to you? I'm going to chat. Let's see what we have here. Robin was promised a horse, money, first doll, a vacation, laptop, new iPhone, a cruise. Whoa, for 50th birthday. New Bible, a train set. MacBook, a cruise, a walkie-talkie doll. I don't even know what that is. Swing, house, <laughs> food, high heel shoes, a house, a wellness watch. Wow. All kinds of promised gifts. All kinds of promised gifts. A farm. Wow. That's that's quite a promise. Uh, to swim with dolphins. I want to do that. Uh, traditional attire by a friend from Kenya. Beautiful. An iPhone, massage chair. And the list goes on. My friends, it's sometimes hard to wait, is it not? 
sometimes hard to wait. Somebody just wrote, I was never promised a gift. Well, I have good news for whoever wrote that because our heavenly father promises us a gift. And so if you are that child or that grown up kid watching right now and this morning, participating this morning, who has never been promised a gift, oh, our heavenly father has a good surprise with you in mind. Let's pray right now again. Let's bow our heads. Dear God in heaven, we don't want to be confused about this promised gift. We don't want to be just talking about this gift. We want to open this gift. And so give us passion, holy passion from heaven for the gift that you, Father, treasure so much. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. Let's open up the book of all books to the book of Acts chapter 1, and we'll be reading verses 4 and 5. And I need one volunteer to read verse 4 and another volunteer to read verse 5. Okay? While we're looking that up, I want to say how much I appreciate those leading us in worship of all ages. Praise the Lord for that. So let's see. Uh, I'm having a hard time keeping up the screen. Henry, if you could read verse four. And then uh, Dina, if you would read verse five. And beginning, being assembled together, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Yes, amen. Thank you both. Now go to chat real quick, everybody. And what is, now be very specific. What is the, the special gift that Jesus was saying? I want you to wait for this gift. And look very carefully at verses four and five before you answer, because there's a short answer and then there is more of a specific answer. I want you to be specific, very specific. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, those of you who are putting in the chat, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, yes, amen to that. Verse five makes it most specific. Look at verse five again. The focus is on being baptized by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that interesting? Now, my friends, Jesus knew that he was about to go back to heaven. And he pressed in close to his disciples. He gathered them around him before he would go back up to heaven. And this is one of the last things he talked about. Amen, everybody? He says, look, I want you to wait for what's been promised. Wait for this gift. Now, all of them must have been so excited on that day about sharing Jesus. They may have been thinking, hmm, I'm going to go all the way to Rome someday. Maybe they thought that. I don't know. Maybe some of them were thinking, you know, as soon as we get done with this, whatever this message is that Jesus is talking about, I need to go to my neighbors. I need to go to my friends that have gone to another uh, part of this world. I need to tell them that Jesus not only died for them, but he rose again for them. I'm sure they were excited about sharing Jesus all over the place. And here with their excitement, Jesus was saying, he was like putting the brakes up. You know what I'm saying? I invite you to put all your hands up just for a second and go like this and push like towards the screen because Jesus was saying, wait, wait. And in fact, he was saying, stop. Well, it was a hard thing to hear. Stop. Wait. Why were you wanting us to stop and wait when we were so excited with good news to share? And Jesus knew that if they didn't stop, if they didn't wait, they would go out with the good news, but without the power, without the power that should attend that good news. And my friends, I wonder, is it possible that you and I as believers in this last day remnant church, is it possible that you and I have been sharing good news with family and friends without the power promised? Is it possible? Let's understand better what 
this promise is all about. Let's go to the Gospel of John and let's see a little bit more about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Now, by the way, in this time that we're in, I'm hearing as I travel around the world, I'm hearing all kinds of ideas about who the Holy Spirit is or isn't. You know, let's always go to the Word of God to define anybody or anything. And the Word of God is the safest place to go. And secondarily to that, the spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> so in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, I need someone to read verses 16, 17, and 18. 16, 17, and 18. So one verse per person. One verse per person. I'll do 16. Thank you. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Verse 16. Thank you. Welcome. 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yes. And now let's look at those three verses closely. Thank you. Thank you. All three of you. So Jesus is saying, I will ask the Father and he will give you another. And some of our translations say comforter. Some say helper. But the point is that Jesus is promising someone that will give us great comfort and great encouragement. Do you need comfort and encouragement right now in your life for what you're going through? Jesus promised that divine person. Now, some of you might say, well, I thought the Holy Spirit was just something. My friends, I have better news than that for you. The Holy Spirit is not something. He's somebody. Somebody. Hallelujah for that. Somebody that knows how to comfort you and to comfort me in exactly what you're going through right now. He's not just an influence. He is a, the Holy One right along with Jesus and God the Father, a Holy One. Look at verse 17. And, and when it refers to the Holy Spirit, it refers to Him, right? He's a divine person. I want to emphasize that again. A Holy One there. Truly God the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said something so precious in verse 18. I will not leave you as what? What's the word? I see some of you mouthing the words. Orphans. 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 That's right. He won't leave you as orphans. Now, by the way, if you are not and have not received this gift of the Holy Spirit, then you are living like an orphan. Now, an orphan. I uh, can still be loved and still have an incredible life without all kinds of gifts. But my friends, um, God says, and God the Son in particular, Jesus Christ, says, I will not leave you as orphans. He wants you to know that you're not alone and that he wants to, to partner with you in the deepest way. And so verse 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. Now, who is the one saying, I will come to you? Jesus is talking. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is talking. So Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, I will come to you. Well, that's interesting because we know that Jesus went back to heaven. So how does Jesus Christ come to you in the Philippines? How does he come to you in the continent of Africa? How does he come to you in Europe? or South America, or wherever you are, North America, wherever you are, Australia, how does he come to you? He comes to, the to you Spirit. by the comforter. The Amen, everybody. He comes to you in that way, to the Holy Spirit. Oh, are we understanding just a bit more of why Jesus, in one of his last few words to his disciples on earth before he went back to heaven, why he said, wait for this gift? He knew, especially in these last days before Jesus comes again, he knew that many of us 
could easily be live, living like an orphan, like an orphan who has good truth, but without the presence of the gift. He doesn't want us to live that way. Somebody online right now, wherever you are, you know who you are. Somebody right now listening is thinking, oh, I think I might be living like an orphan. You know, uh, let's read a little bit more about what's, what Jesus tells us about this gift. Just turn a few pages over to chapter 16. Chapter 16. Okay. And let's read verses. Let's start out with verse 7. Verse 7. And let's read it all the way through verse 13. So 7 through 13. And I just want uh, one person to read that passage for us, please. Let's listen very carefully to what we learn about the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and he see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. For he mm -hmm. shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he shall show it unto you. All these things the Father had a mind. Therefore I say, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, I sometimes have been tempted to think, oh, I wish I would have lived in the first century. Have you ever thought? I wish I could have been along the Sea of Galilee and walking with Jesus and hearing him teach up on the mountain. How many of you have ever thought that? You ever thought that? I wish I could have actually seen when Jesus turned the water into that pure grape juice, the pure wine. I wish I could have been there when he healed the lepers. I wish I could have been there. You know, as much as we say that, Jesus says here in this passage, it's actually to your advantage that I go. And that you get the comforter I'm promising you. Because Jesus, as awesome it was, it was to hang out with Jesus and to walk with him and talk with him and to watch him and all that he did. He could only be in one place at one time. Are we together? One place Amen. at one time. Now, I love the fact, as I see your faces right here, and I see some of you actually put, uh, some of you put on your, your screen your name and what country you're from. And uh, some of you didn't, but by the way, let's start doing that each time. And here's, here's just a simple illustration. I love the fact that Pastor Luis Antonio Diaz from Brazil, can you wave to everybody on your screen? That, the, that Jesus intends for our brother in Brazil to have the Holy Spirit this, at the same time as my friend Miriam in the Philippines. Can you wave to everybody? As same time as Miriam in the Philippines, oh, there's other people from the Philippines too, they're waving, that's good. But as same time as Miriam and her friends in the Philippines have the Holy Spirit. This is not a, a casual gift from heaven. This is a powerful gift. It's beautiful to me that Henry, I don't know where Henry is. Henry, what, what part of the world are you in? I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. In Memphis, Tennessee, ah. I, I served Jesus in Memphis there many, many years ago. So here, here, Henry is in the far end of the same state I'm in. I'm in the eastern part. He's in the western part. And he has access to the gift of the Holy Spirit 100% as much as I do here in the eastern part. Are we together here? 
Are we together, everybody? This is not a small thing. This is precious, precious. He is just as accessible to each one of us online, 100% as accessible. Wow. Big, big deal. Awesome, awesome deal. And he's just as accessible to you if you are in slavery of some kind this morning. When I say slavery, if you are coming online here and you're bound by something that that is that is evil that's holding you back, you're bound by by some temptation, by some habit, whatever you can get out of it. The Holy Spirit is there with you, ready to help you and free you by the power of Jesus, just as much as somebody somewhere else on the planet who's rejoicing this morning and has all the freedom of Christ already. Wow. I love that about Jesus, and I love that about the gift that he's promised. Now, look closely with me with what our brother just read just a little bit ago. Look closely at verse 13. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into what? Into what? All truth. All truth. All truth. All truth. Now, sometimes we think of that, especially as Seventh-day Adventists, because the Seventh-day Adventists, by the way, we have been trusted with such an incredible, biblically-based message. But sometimes we can be tempted to think of truth only as, um, as a doctrine, as something written out, like, da, 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 like this, you know what I'm saying? And we can think of truth like that, like non-personal. But I need someone to read John 14, verse 16. Okay, John 14, verse 16. Let's check this out real quick, because to me, it's precious. And hold on one second here. Okay, we just read 14, 16. And um, look at one more thing here. Let's, Let's back up just a second here. And you know what? You'll have to help me out, everybody, uh, because I had this just in my brain, and I just lost it. Here's verse 6, but then I need one more verse. I know I'm super close to it. In verse 6, it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father through me. That's the one I was looking for. Verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus says he's the truth. The Holy Spirit says he'll guide you and me into all truth Mm. so the holy spirit is to help you and me find who jesus the truth jesus Jesus. this is powerful this is powerful now i'm not trying to digress but to make a very very important point is think about the truths for this end of time okay think about the truths for the end of time every truth Let's start out with a, a one that's over obvious. We think about salvation, okay? The power of the truth about salvation is Jesus. Jesus is the source of salvation by his grace. Simple, direct, right? Let's think about uh, Sabbath, seventh-day Sabbath. Sometimes we try to declare the seventh-day Sabbath, but forget that the focus or the core message of the Sabbath is about who we worship on the seventh day Sabbath. And that's Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit takes the truths of the word of God and helps us see Jesus Christ in them. Let me give you a few more examples. I want you to track with me on this. This is very, very precious to me. I hope it is to you. Sometimes we lift up the good news that Jesus is coming again, but we focus on the second coming. We just call it the second coming, right? The second coming. And we teach about the nearness of the second coming, the signs of his coming, all these things. But we forget to focus. The main point of the second coming is it's the second coming of Jesus. Jesus. There was a first coming. Jesus. He's coming back. He's coming back. And look at it at chapter 14 there and look at verse, verse two and three in my father's house are many rooms or many places. If it were not so, I would have told you for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there, you may be also. 
my friends, the Holy Spirit wants to make every teaching of the Word of God clear to you that it's about the truth of Jesus. The truth of Jesus. Let me take one, uh, one or two more that we sometimes separate in our minds. And when we separate it from Jesus, it has no power. There is the teaching of scripture about tithing. Okay. Are you with me, everybody? Now, is tithing a biblical teaching? Absolutely. Right. Yes. And, and the word of God teaches us that we're supposed to take a faithful tithe back to the storehouse. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go way off on that, but, but in the word of God, take it to the storehouse, take it to the local church where you are. Okay. Now, that teaching cuts right across of what we want to do as humans. We want to have, make our money and keep our money. Are you with me? <laughs> we want to just, you know, we want as humans, that's what we want to do. But it's only when we understand tithing and stewardship as it is when, in Jesus that the teaching of tithing and stewardship gets life because Jesus Christ has given me everything. He's given you everything. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So when I trust him with my tithe, Sorry, Pastor Don, I see you've gotten, unfortunately, muted. Okay. I don't know how that's happening. Every once in a while, somebody's muting us. Anyway, can you hear me now? Hopefully you can. But, but the, the, the joy of returning a faithful tithe is that we return it to Jesus, the one who already has given you and given me everything. Now, my friends. There are 20, 28 fundamental beliefs that we as Seventh-day Adventists hold from the Word of God, clearly from the Word of God. Though one of the blessings of the Holy Spirit for these last days is saying, Father God, I need the Holy Spirit so I can understand these truths about Jesus and know what Jesus has to do with each of those truths. Because each of those truths rightly understands, understood paints a true picture of the real Jesus Christ. These truths about him are only understood as the Holy Spirit opens our mind to the word of God to see that picture painted appropriately. Without the Holy Spirit, we just take them as, as just dry doctrines. With the Holy Spirit, they come alive and you see Jesus for his glory and his grace. Amen? amen. So now, amen. let's look again back to Acts 1, verses 4 and 5. Okay. I just looked at the time. I have to, oof, there's so much here. Uh, but in Acts 1, verses 4 and 5, again, he says, wait for this gift, which the Father promised for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a precious, precious thing. The other day, I read to you from Christ's Object Lessons. Uh, that was yesterday, actually. And I mentioned that, that daily, Jesus received a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's 139 of Christ's Object Lessons. Daily, he received this gift. I love it that our Savior, he didn't just say, he didn't just wag a finger over the disciples saying, you wait for this gift. Every day, Jesus, while he was on earth, he waited for and received this gift himself. Amen, everybody? Every day he did. And so when he tells, when he told the disciples then, and when he tells us today, wait for the gift, it's not telling us to do something that he didn't do. He's telling us to do something he did daily, every single day. My friends, this week, we will be learning from the word of God in this series twice a day, we'll be learning what does it mean to live by the spirit of God. And if you have not been waiting and receiving this gift, then come to him with hunger. And uh, in just in a few hours from now, I will be doing another, the next part on this. That's at five o'clock this afternoon, my time, whatever it is in your time. 
But now I invite you to go to the breakout rooms and let's pray that God will give us the passion from heaven, the commitment from heaven to wait for and receive what God has promised us, not just once in a while, but every single day of our life. Let's pray for that now. And then we'll come back just for the last few minutes to close. Let's go to our breakout rooms. We thank you so much for the Holy Spirit you promised us. We ask you now to give us enough wisdom so that we may understand your words and live with you and for you. Amen. Amen. Anyone else would like to? Dear please? Father Sister. in heaven, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Deborah. Sister Donna, she unmuted. 
Thank you. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this reminder of the importance of waiting to be filled with your Holy Spirit before running off on our own strength to even our family members. Oh, Father, please forgive us. But from now on, give us that reminder not to go forth until we've been filled with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Dear God in heaven, uh, I I ask that you would give me more of an understanding of my desperate need for this gift every day. Mm -hmm. God, help me, help all of us in this breakout room as we're praying together to recommit to wait for this gift every day and to receive this gift by faith every day of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as often as necessary to pause and wait again when we feel like we are running on low, that we can always ask for another measure of this measureless gift. Hear our prayers as we're praying here in this room. Amen. Anyone else would like to pray? Please unmute. We have four minutes. If none, I can pray. Yes. I'm sure, I have another, another prayer request I'd like to pray. Yes, Heavenly please Father, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, today, my uh, sister in law has a surgery. She's got cancer mm -hmm. and her husband just message asking that we remember to pray for her. They're in good spirits. They're trusting you. They believe that you have everything under control. Mm -hmm. But they want to do their part and they want to be faithful in prayer to submit and surrender to your perfect will. So that no matter what happens, in the end, may you be glorified. And so that's what I pray that even through this situation, Many will come to know you and serve you and love you dearly. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hearken unto the voice of our cry, our King and our God, for unto you we will pray. Our voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. Mm -hmm. In the morning mm -hmm. will we direct our prayer unto you, and we will look up to you, Lord. Amen. Remember, please. This brother's uh, request, Lord, for the sister, please, we commit this situation into your hands. You, you are a good God, and you do not err. So hear his prayer and hear our united prayer mm -hmm. for this sister. Mm -hmm. And Father in heaven, we do need a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, dear God. But we also mm -hmm. realize, Lord, that we have a part to... The, to, to apply the condition, Lord. So we come to you. Take away all of our sins, Father, and teach us how to consecrate our hearts, our lives, that we may be um, um, ready for mm. the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, dear God. And please, Lord, give us hunger and thirst for this Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. we want to have in our lives, Father. Mm. Thank you very much for this amazing, precious gift, Lord. We have waited long enough. I believe in this group here. We have waited long enough. Lord, help us throughout these 40 days of prayer that we will receive, not only today, but as Jesus received daily baptism, the Holy Spirit. We want that too, Father. And so we commit our prayer, Lord, for all who are hungry and thirst for your Holy Spirit. Fill us to overflowing, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, our righteousness, we ask. Amen. 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 God, I want to also join my prayers for Brother Don Robinson's uh, sister-in-law, if I got that right. God, we lift her up to you right now and any family member she's with. And in this day of her surgery, we thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit brings the mm -hmm. presence of Jesus there in a way we don't understand, but we know and believe that he does that. And so may the Holy Spirit bring the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus himself, mm -hmm. right to her heart, right to that room. 
And may there be a stillness and quietness in Christ because of this waited for gift. This is our Amen. prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I have a closing verse. Uh, but verily, God hath heard me, and he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. And that is Psalm 66, verses 19 to 20. So God bless us all. We are going back in just three seconds back to the main session. Thank you very much. God Thank bless. you, Deborah. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, closing thought, closing thought comes from Acts of the Apostles, and it comes from Training of the Twelve, and page 17. For the carrying on of his work, Christ did not choose the learning or eloquence of the Jewish Sanhedrin or the power of Rome, passing by the self-righteous Jewish teachers, the master worker, talking about Jesus, chose humble, unlearned men to proclaim the truth that was to move the world. These men he purposed to train and educate as the leaders of his church. They in turn were to educate others and send them out with a gospel message that they might have success in their work. They were to be given the power of the Holy Spirit, not by human might or human wisdom was the gospel to be proclaimed, but by the power of God. Wow. I love that. Today. Today, as the delegates are coming together from all around the world, along with administrators of the church, this is our prayer that the Spirit of God will not only hover over the meetings, but that he will be actively working in the hearts of everyone there. Amen. Can you still hear, hear me, everybody? Okay, let's pray. Amen. Dear Father, dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for Jesus, your son. And thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit promised. Even today, help us to wait and receive this gift before doing anything else. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much this session. Thank you, God. Thank you and goodbye. Thank, Thank you, brother God. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, Donna. Bye, Donna. How are you? God bless you all. Bye. 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 Bye